Hi everybody, Lauren McLaughlin here with another amazing first date. You should be like well versed in my first date participant today. It's the one and only, the incomparable Dave Fleming. We're gonna be back in just a moment to learn all about him off mic and outside of pickleball. Don't go anywhere guys. Welcome back everybody. Lauren McLaughlin here again with Dave Fleming, my amazing first date. Thank you so much, uh, mostly to your wife, Deb, for allowing <laughs> you on this date. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. She fully approved, so we're Excellent. in good shape. Here. I love it. <laughs> love, love Deb Fleming. So uh, maybe I'll go on a date with Deb next. I'd love for she you to do that. She probably can give you all the dirt <laughs> that you will not provide today. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, so people, might know Dave Fleming as, you know, superstar senior pro pickleball player, of course. Huge Steelers fan, that's no surprise to anyone. I'm, I think you've exclusively dressed in yellow and black for the last how many years? 40. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Basically, since your mother stopped dressing you, yes. you were like, all Steelers all the time. I love it. All right, so our first dates, we're getting to know everyone outside of pickleball since you guys are love, loving getting to know your favorite pros, as am I. Um, Dave Fleming, of course, is my partner in crime on the mic, along with Dominic Catalano for all the APP events. It's been such a, such a privilege having him, but you guys might not know, Dave Fleming, you are one of the most interesting people in pickleball as well. I don't know if you'd agree with that, but. I, I appreciate that. I've had the, uh, <laughs> privilege to do a lot of uh, interesting things so you I sure look forward have. to sharing it's that fair, today. You just look so now I was gonna <laughs> what if it bad that you look so not interesting though Dave. You're like, so boring you and normal. You so normal <laughs> and like what does this guy got going on? I love it. All right let's start with maybe one of my faves you know Jerry Seinfeld has riding in cars with comedians that he interviews and things. I have you know riding the chairs at Delray Beach with my favorite comedian. And that's, I, I'm not just saying that, an actual legitimate comedian, people. Number two, I believe, I put you at number one. That Thank whoever you. did that poll is just stupid. Number one ranked corporate comedian. Tell us what that means exactly. I was a little confused. I was like, corporate comedian, like, what does that mean? So tell us a little bit about your, your comedy career, Dave that people didn't know you had. Yeah, so thank you. Um, you know, I always uh, was the guy in high school when we did the National Honor Society inductions. I was David Letterman. So I was always writing comedy from mm -hmm. really a young age. And in college, I did some stand-up. And as I progressed in my career as a marketer, which is what I did long before I got involved in pickleball, the idea of getting paid to be funny was very appealing to mm -hmm. me. So I worked in an office, I wanted to do comedy. I said, well, let's smash those two things together. As one does. And so I wrote a one man show called Man Vs. Office, mm -hmm. which is making fun of the ridiculous food that put, people put in the break room that then yes. or in somebody, the microwave. or yeah, the, in the, microwave. Oh, the uh -huh. stench of what people, <laughs> The popcorn button is a lie, Lauren. Oh my gosh. You it just is. get that and then it just gets stuck <laughs> it on is. you. Oh my gosh. The Orville Redenbacher <laughs> just all over me for a whole day. It's uh -huh. the worst. And if it swam for its living and you brought it in the next day mm -hmm. and put it on high, please don't freaking do that. Oh okay? My gosh, uh, don't I love it. do it. Uh, so it's that. It's the hilarity of conference calls, email. If you've worked in a cubicle, if you've put a home sweet home sign on a cubicle, you would get uh, my I feel personally my attacked right now yeah. because I have worked as my adult career in cubicles in an office. Oh my gosh, I 
already am dying laughing even considering this. So you you have this one man show. You've done stand up, however, like through the years as yep. well. Where so is this one man show? Like you do it at corporate functions. It's available online to purchase if someone would like to watch it at home. So <laughs> I don't sell the comedy. Right. Um, I you know I've done well over a hundred uh, live performances of Man vs. Office. One date on Broadway, actually, which was really fun at the what Snapple show? Theater in New York. Yeah. Did you get so, nominated for a Tony? I just missed, I think. Oh, yeah, I, I think it. freaking <laughs> Hugh Jackman beat me out. I can't believe it. Hugh but uh, Wolverine. I know. But uh, <laughs> uh, no, I've you know it's just fun to go out and you know the the rush of playing the sport that we all love is one thing, but the rush of the comedy and what people don't realize is it is a conversation even though one person's talking it is a conversation so the perfection of that craft is being patient like pickleball at the at the kitchen line Mm -hmm. being patient and letting the whole idea was i came there to make you laugh sure and if i just keep talking while you're laughing i've ruined everything i came there to do so that's where you really refine that and that's how the show got better and better Mm -hmm. as i went along and then where does this corporate comedy ranking thing that you talked about you know i hit the podium which i'm very excited about lost the gold medal match in three (laughs) but uh what can you do uh so yes the same material i usually sort of carved up for corporate settings and took their acronyms and their things that they Mm -hmm, think mm -hmm. is funny and would put that together and do uh corporate events so i've done public and private with that i love it that is so fantastic and i obviously i feel like in our commentating for app events you know dave is by far the wittiest kind of on your feet coming up with those puns and great things so i love that and appreciate that and i would absolutely pay any amount of money to come see your one-man show so please let everyone know when your next show will be we'll be there in droves i love it so let's go a little you know like i said many many interesting things about you let's go back to maybe a slightly boring thing about you why don't you just give us like a really quick recap of you know your family you have a couple lovely children kind of where they're at in life and and how you met your wife Deb okay we'll start there Mm -hmm. so I met the lovely Deb Fleming on a double date when we weren't each other's date so my favorite kind of meeting so yeah (laughs) I uh, I'm like it was me one of my best friends in college Deb Bracone at the time Mm -hmm. and I have no idea who I was with I'm sorry (laughs) ma'am if you're watching I have absolutely no idea who that is and That's uh amazing. because you were just so starstruck by uh, deb the whole yeah, time you I didn't was, even see anyone else i was like there's only three of us here right mm-hmm. and uh so it was interesting because we both went to miami university in ohio and we didn't date one day mm-hmm. there uh but what's interesting is miami sends valentine's to what we call miami mergers so miami mergers are obviously a couple that's born of 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 miami graduation Mm -hmm. and this year they send you a valentine every year which is really cool yeah this year they sent miami merger mass for the for the times that we're in so yeah so i'm you know i'm blessed Uh, i i outkept my coverage by 10 million miles (laughs) Uh, my wife is a saint. She works with the kids with autism in the Love elementary and elementary school. So she's she's wonderful. Mm-hmm. She's inspired my children. Both my children are in college. So my oldest is Gabby. She is getting her master's in psychology right now. She wants to be a counselor like her mother was. Very and cool. then young Natalie is a sophomore at Oklahoma, Boomer Sooner, mm-hmm. and she wants to be a teacher. So. Uh, her mom has certainly inspired her to go down that road. So I've always been surrounded with women. I have two sisters. It's the best, uh, it's the best it, thing it's, to do. What could be better than that? I, know. I have two sisters. Every dog I've had has been a female. So and I love I love being around the ladies. And it's you know so I'm I'm blessed as a dad. I'm a girl dad through that. and through. So are, you're not personally offended that neither of your daughters wanted to go into comedy? <laughs> or? My. Uh, <laughs> My the youngest lights. daughter, Natalie, is unbelievably funny. So I, I, I so she I had would, the funny gene from I, dad. I, at I least. think so. I think so. Love it. Okay. So, 
beautiful, gorgeous family, fantastic. So let's say, you know, somebody in pickleball land, you know, just met the love of their life and they needed like a quickie Vegas style wedding. Dave, do you know anyone that could like make that happen? Well, me. What? <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. Um, I'm also an ordained minister, as it turns out. So uh, about 12 years ago now, one of my best friends from college said, hey, we're getting married in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. You seem to be comfortable in front of groups. Uh -huh. would, you, would you marry us? And I'm like, I'm not a minister. And <laughs> like, he was like, I think you can do it. So I did some research. Yes, you can get ordained online. I am part of the Rose Ministries of Las Vegas, Nevada that you just mentioned. <laughs> I love it. I paid a little extra for the laminated card Ooh, to hey. make it official. Yes. And uh, yeah, so I have started with my great friend and college roommate on the beach in Hawaii, mm -hmm. did that. So I've signed that marriage certificate. And then I've worked in marketing, as I mentioned, all my life. Marketers are typically female. It's usually 60-40 in most marketing mm -hmm. departments for, for whatever reason. And people get their MBAs, come into a marketing department. That mid to late 20s is when people get married. So I always mm -hmm. was like, jokingly, hey, I'll be your safety minister. Uh -huh, yep. You've done all this planning. What happens if car, car accidents, stuff happens? Mm -hmm. You're all there and you don't have a minister. So I've jokingly said that and actually ended up marrying one of my fellow marketers. Uh -huh. And you mentioned pickleball and Nevada. One of my good friends, Richard Eisenman, I officiated his wedding in Las Vegas, Nevada. Very solid pickleball player and one of the best racquetball players in the world. And uh, so, yes, pickleball family. Guys, if you need a safety minister to marry you, you get Dave Fleming's number on speed dial put just safety minister underneath just so you remember the context yes. of why you need to call Dave Fleming but just another little notch of a weird fun quirky yeah. interesting thing about you that no you wouldn't know no one knows ever. don't wear a collar <laughs> but it's there but you carry the card in your wallet in at case. all times in case of emergency you need to have identification over, ordained minister yes you need to officer. have identification in these times Lauren I love it fantastic so of course huge Steelers fan yes. so a little bit about you know where you're from obviously where you grew up where you live now so this is my father's fault uh, <laughs> without question um, my parents met at the copier at US Steel in downtown Pittsburgh so my dad has steel running through him and so do I mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's awesome, you know, like I always talk to anyone that has ever worked for me or whatever, just be passionate about something mm -hmm. and, and just dive in. So I'm a person that's probably really into four or five things, not a hundred, sure. but way in. Like my brand is very clear. As a marketer, yes. knowing your brand mm -hmm. is very clear. I didn't plan to wear black and gold today. I was gonna wear black and <laughs> gold like, today. You're like, it's not a question. It's no, it's, it's happening. Just if, Life. If, and it's funny at tournaments, my parents or whoever, my friends, family that want to come see me play, they just look it up. Oh, there it is. Yep, there so, it is. So again, it's a gift <laughs> to others. Um, so uh, I've lived actually. My dad worked in heavy machinery, so the big, huge Tonka trucks, but the mm -hmm. real ones. So we moved around a lot. So I went to elementary school in Hershey, PA. Mm -hmm. Yes, it smells like chocolate in Amazing. the downtown streets. Mm -hmm. Uh, high school, I went to middle school in Albuquerque, New Mexico, before William White was selling anything there. <laughs> high school in Memphis, college as I mentioned in Miami of Ohio, and I currently live in a suburb of Dallas. All right, so we're learning a little bit of the interesting, and maybe not so interesting, but still relevant facts about Dave Fleming. We're going to take a really quick break, guys. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with First Dates.
Welcome back everybody. I am Lauren McLaughlin and I am currently in the middle of an amazing first date with Dave Fleming. Thank you again for joining me. Thrilled to be here. It's so fantastic. So we obviously, uh, you know, you're a commentator with me for the APP tour, but this is by no means your first foray into commentating, sir. So I believe a birdie told me that you used to, you know, call all of your high school sports events. Tell us a little bit about uh, that situation. Yeah, uh, GHS TV, so Germantown High School TV. Uh, I was the sports commentator. I was the sports anchor for our weekly news show, so mm -hmm. I'd get to give my own tennis scores, <laughs> which fortunately I had a very good high school career, but I had to I had to report losses too, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which yep. it was just devastating. Yeah, devastating. <laughs> like, oh, I have to rehash this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, basketball, football. Uh, I got to do what the by far the best was I got to do a weekly feature of anything going on in Germantown as a suburb of Memphis, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So I interviewed Jimmy Connors. I would literally be a ball boy during his match throw on my press pass, throw a coat over my ball boy gear and run up and I'd be next to all the national reporters, be able to ask a question right there. So That's I was, so it was really, really cool, the access that myself and my cameraman had. And actually another cool story is the cameraman is now in Dallas, has a huge job at the CBS affiliate. We've shot some stuff together for things. So it's amazing how the world works. That's so it's so really cool. fun. Yeah. I love it. Um, so you you mentioned tennis and how oh my gosh it's Sarah Ansbury, you're next. Can you still me? We are. <laughs> she Hi, wants Sarah. to go on a first. Did you want to go on a first date too, Sarah? You should. Yes. It's the best. Sarah's next, guys. We'll get it. It's her next. the best. <laughs> These are the best dates ever, Sarah. <laughs> um, so okay, you mentioned you mentioned tennis career. Yes. Speaking of one of the best tennis players we just saw there. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about your tennis career. It, it, uh, you're not a professional tennis player, so true. obviously it, it, <laughs> it was cut short at some point, Dave Fleming. But uh, just kind of walk us through and, and any, any other sports that you maybe played or tennis is maybe you, you go to. Yeah, as a kid, I was very into baseball and tennis. So the seasons were the same. And mm, I, yes. you know, and I loved, loved baseball, loved playing it. I uh, love playing shortstop, little little scrappy kid, get on base, steal a base, all mm -hmm. of that. And it got to the point where to do one or the other at a really high level I had to choose because they were the, the same seasons. Mm -hmm. And what probably helped with that story is I got hit in the back by a pitch like a kid threw a breaking ball that didn't break. and. After that, it was hard for me to stand in the box as yeah. much as I did before because you yeah. see it and yep. a breaking ball does look like it's mm -hmm. coming potentially at you. So mm -hmm. the fuzzy yellow tennis ball uh, much was less, uh, much, I much mean, less. It hurts if you get it yeah. drilled at you, but it's, it's not quite the same. No. <laughs> so that, you know, that sort of started that road. I, I played very high level junior tennis. My high school team was really good. Uh, my partner in, at Germantown beat pros he's he was just on the cusp of that nice i walked on in miami of ohio was the last person cut uh was told i can stay and probably play as a as a sophomore and throughout that and i said no i'll just play number one on the club team which is what i did so we played all the division two and three schools which was perfect for me so i got nice. really nice level tennis at school without the the demands pressure. if you will mm -hmm. i mean i know i'm little i'm look i'm a little five eight guy i'm not going to play pro tennis but uh it is the foundation of a lot of things for me when you talk about singles tennis versus comedy it's you you and only you mm -hmm. on that quarter on that on that on that mic so that was really good for me and then obviously all of the tennis skills just translated really nicely to pickleball as uh, many, many tennis many, players have, have come many. on over. I am so, not alone in that. Yes, indeed. Um, so you mentioned earlier, of course, uh, you're in marketing. Yes. That's kind of your day job, corporate job, if you will. Um, I don't even know if you're allowed to say who you work for, Dave. Sure. But uh, tell us a little bit about sort of your marketing career, what you're doing now in that, and uh, a little bit about, uh, about Dave's, Dave in the office. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, what, it's what triggered the comedy. So uh, I started in the most horrendous field you could think of, but I got great experience. So I started at Delta Dental, and I love the Delta Dental <laughs> people, so just to be clear. Mm -hmm. But I know way too much about endodontics and root My canals. My dad's an endodontist. Oh, there you go. You guys could chat we all should. about it. You'd be like, please kill me. This is <laughs> bringing back some trauma from my earlier life. So, you know, when you graduate, with a marketing degree, you know, I'm gonna go make Super Bowl commercials and you know, and I'm doing brochures about flossing. Yep, so, uh -huh. but I, I reported directly to the president. I got to go on advertising shoots. So it was a great foundation. From there, I went to work in Orlando. We'll probably talk about that later on. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from that point forward, it was all big, corporate marketing. So I was uh, in charge of field and promotion for Pizza Hut, uh, doing national promotions with things like Star Wars, the NFL, and things nice. like that. Uh, and then if you've eaten that much pizza, you got to wash it down. So I was the head of marketing for Dr. Pepper, the soft drink, Snapple, Mott's, and now I am uh, uh, in charge of the accounts for an agency that works with those brands, Anheuser-Busch and many others. So you, I mean, in terms of like the marketing world, you've, kind of, you've, you've made it, Dave. You're I like, did, I, you know, I did and I did get to, I, I actually have shot a Super Bowl commercial with the band Kiss. What? Yeah, so. Uh, did Gene Simmons show you his tongue? Gene Simmons' tongue was like a <laughs> millimeter for me, so. Uh, you were like, it's too close. Yeah, so. It's like an alien when like, so Sorry. Roni Weaver has like the thing yes. like right here like 100% ah, like in her face. No, he's he is the most brilliant marketer of anybody. That band is phenomenal. So, uh, the premise was Dr. Pepper Cherry has just a little kiss of cherry. I remember that commercial. So we had a band that was just a little part of Kiss with the real band. I 100% yeah. remember that commercial day. So one of the coolest days of my life was hanging out with the band KISS. Oh they were flicking gosh. guitar picks at me, which hurt if they hit well, you, I by mean, the way. I mean, but it's KISS, you don't care. I mean, Paul Stanley, the, it, was, it was unbelievable. I got to play the drum kit. I don't know how to play drums, but I beat the crap out of it. <laughs> well, I can yeah, tell you that course. much, because who gets to do that? So it's funny that that's sort of the dream, and I actually got to be there. And the other interesting thing about marketing is you're looking for insights about why consumers act a certain way and comedy is the exact same thing. You're looking to exaggerate and find things that mm -hmm. people can relate to like we talked about earlier. The things yeah. in the office that you do every day put a spin on that. So all of that has sort of built a nice foundation for the things that I've enjoyed doing in my career. Very cool. So you mentioned earlier as well a little uh, Orlando yes. Disney. So we'll we'll maybe wrap it up with the last kind of crazy out of the blue no one would expect it amazingness about you Dave, which is uh, you basically created so everyone everyone knows if you've been to a theme park, you know, the DMV wherever <laughs> like you know standing in lines standing in lines, especially at an amusement park, you know, the, the winding through the corrals, yes. in line for an hour lines to ride Space Mountain or the likes. Um, so you, you tell us about, you know, what you created, how it got, who bought it, all that good stuff, kind of experience with uh, Mickey Mouse that you've had. Uh, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up there. Sure. So it was crazy because I mentioned I worked at Delta Dental, with all due respect to your father. <laughs> not a lot of fun mm -hmm. to talk about mm -hmm. teeth all day. And then I joined a small special events company in Orlando. And we were the preferred partner for Disney for all of the corporate events that went down there. So we did corporate Olympics. We did game shows. I hosted game shows about, hey, we have a new product launch. We got 600 people in the room. Mm -hmm. If we just rattle off PowerPoint slides, this is going to suck. Yep. Uh -huh. So yep. make that fun, turn it into a game show. We built cardboard boats and raced them in the pools yes. at the, at uh -huh. the uh, various uh, resort hotels. Mm -hmm. So we had an interesting group. We had very creative thinkers, but then we had people that had recreation degrees because when you have three, 400 people on a field, 
you need to know how to organize those people. You need to know what games make sense, the ma mm -hmm. materials, the rules, safety, all of that. So we had that unique combination. We're in Orlando, and what is the number one problem in Orlando? You mentioned it. It's waiting in line. You wait mm -hmm. 60 minutes for a 90-second ride in some yep. cases, and that's, that's painful. So myself and uh, one of my friends, also from Miami of Ohio, who work for this company, we said this summer we're going to figure out how to fix this. Yep. We're going to figure it out. We are going to climb Mount Kilimanjaro of the Disney Challenge and fix the line. So we threw a backpack of all the stuff we had in our warehouse and just said somehow we can make lines better. And we would go in the middle of July Oof. in the heat of Florida, sweaty tourists everywhere, and we would go, hey, Oh, good. Space, Space Mountain line is two hours. Perfect. <laughs> Hooray. Look at us, like doing the exact opposite of what anyone would do. And so we just tried to sort of figure out what could we do while we're here? Could we come up with something that people could buy and do as a family? We started down that road and then we said, no, what if we park entertainers in the middle of this mm -hmm. and now you're completely mesmerized and entertaining you don't even realize that you have sure. been yep. circling in the mm -hmm. corral mm -hmm. as you mentioned earlier yep. so we came up with what we thought was perfection and we started with MGM Studios which is what it was called at the time it's now Disney Studios mm -hmm. but you don't just get a Disney gig okay no, no, no. fortunately since we had that other connection through the recreation and the team building we were able to get a meeting mm -hmm. That doesn't happen, but we had it. So we prepared like crazy and we knew there'd be maybe an Imagineer. Imagineers are the ones that create the rides, create everything. Yep. They're, they're the people. That's what you want to be at Disney. Yep. So we walk in the room, 15 Imagineers sitting there, all of the corporate folks, all of the operations folks. This is a room of 30, just this horseshoe what? wrapped around four of us. So they were excited about this thinking that we Clearly had there. Clearly you're on the right track so, to get that whew, many people. And I'm like, oh my goodness, okay. Wow. Um, so we said, we're just gonna let it rip. And we had themed games for The Little Mermaid. We had a game called Fish Sticks where we'd hold up uh, on, a, on literally a whiteboard fun thing so for nurse shark we'd show a shark dressed mm -hmm. like a nurse and the kids could yell out what it is and horseshoe fish and uh, so it's like all of a sudden you don't even realize you're like are, am I in a game show and am I playing something we yep. give people clay at the time they had a show called hunchback in Notre Dame which mm -hmm. has gargoyles everywhere so here's some clay make like a gargoyle, gargoyle while you're going through yep. at Tower of Terror we were stacking plastic champagne glasses to fit that theme of, uh -huh. of that ride and I've never been more distracted in a presentation that I was literally giving by an Imagineer who we gave the clay to made like the greatest gargoyle oh on the yes. fly I'm like sir oh wait I'm presenting I'm like, <laughs> like where am where I where am I so they loved it it was called Q crew because the British word for yep, a Q, Q is a yep. Q and we would literally go from ride to ride, entertaining people at MGM Studios. It was a huge success. And this is before what they have today, which is a lot of electronics, a lot of yep. ride management from that standpoint. But mm -hmm. the fundamental idea was bought by the most creative people in the world. I got to do some of the entertaining. I had the little Dave Disney official mm -hmm. name badge, Pittsburgh PA on there. So. You know, that's something I'm really proud of and uh, something that those of us that got to work on it will never forget. That's, ugh, that's so cool. Like, once again, did you ever think, just look at, just look, look at this, at guys, me. where you're like, ordained minister, world-renowned comedian, basically a Disney Imagineer, like, come on, <laughs> it's a friggin' Dave Fleming. He's amazing. All right, we learned some awesome things about you. The lovely Deb Plumbing, thank God she didn't marry that guy that for she was sure. on the date with. <laughs> We'd never be here today. But thank you so much for joining me. It was an absolute pleasure. Hopefully you guys at home enjoyed getting to know Dave Fleming a little bit more off the court. I mean, we could probably go on like a second and third date to talk about all the amazing things that you have done and do and all that stuff. It's just 
Oh, I love it. I could just talk to you all day, Dave. You're making me laugh, just cracking me up. But uh, you know, we we got things to do. You got I'm, other I'm people going today. To date with Sarah Ansbury. <laughs> I am a I'm a wanted commodity, Dave, on the dating circuit. Finally, for the first time. <laughs> yeah, fist bump. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Dave Fleming, of course, a big thank you as well. And uh, make sure and stay tuned to see who I am going on a first date with next. See you in a couple weeks, guys.